Well, welcome back to Fly Fishing Rutland Water. And we are actually on Rutland Water. This is my first trip out on the mighty reservoir this year. It's the 5th of April. I decided this year that I wasn't going to have a season ticket. I'm going to have fewer trips on Rutland, but try and make them more higher quality ones by picking times of the year where the fishing should be really at its best. So, been lots of reports of good catches on my Facebook page, Fly Fishing Rutland Water and my other adventures. And it seems that they are now taking buzzers. So today is really simple. It's just floating line and buzzers, nothing else. Um, now apparently, we're up in Hideaway Bay and apparently this place has been hit very hard over the weekend. These boats that are in front of me are all anchored and they're obviously all trying to intercept the fish that are moving up and down the bank. I don't want to do that. The objective for today believe it or not, is not to catch a lot of fish because that's kind of the game that a lot of people are playing at the moment. It's all about really big numbers of fish. I don't really want to do that. The allure of Rutland Water from the early season is the pursuit of really nice overwintered fish. Um, and they aren't always where the stocked fish are. Sometimes the stocked fish will draw them in and it'll increase the the feeding pressure for the food um, but at the moment that doesn't seem to be happening there's not been a huge amount of reports of um, good overwintered fish being caught there's the odd one here and there and some fabulous specimens so today I'm actually going to keep on the move I'm not going to be anchoring at all I'm going to just keep on the move and see if we can get one of these lovely silver torpedoes with the uh, with a lovely silver tail. So this is the famous Hideaway Bay. Um, it's great for buzzers in April, but it really comes into its own in May when you start to get the big brownies in here. Now I'm going to do the the infamous hang. Are you watching, Craig? I'm hanging the line properly, and I have a rod that's capable of handling the fish this year. I've got my five weight with me, but I, I learned last year that. You don't really want to be using the five weight in places where there's um, there are, there's a chance of larger fish. So I'm kind of sticking with the uh, the six weight rod. Don't have to throw a long line out. It's basically throw the buzzers out and just keep in touch with the line and hope that a a fish comes a play in. Um, it's quite a nice day. There's a, quite a reasonable amount of cloud cover, and I'm hoping that that stays with us for the day. Now, my plan today is to drift in behind these boats and then as I get close to them, I'm going to keep moving down the bank, trying to cover fresh water rather than staying in one place. I'm casting in a fan, one left, one middle, one right. Sometimes it's these sideways casts that are the ones that the fish will want. I'll show you the flies in a little while. Um, I just bought a bunch of buzzers um, from Craig a few weeks ago, so it's it's them primarily that I'm giving a splash. But uh, Craig messaged me last night to tell me that uh, the fish were down a little bit, so he was having to use a, one of these heavier grubber buzzers on the point, and I didn't have any of those in the box. So I had to go buy some from the lodge this morning. And uh, wait till you see which flies I bought from the lodge. I've seen a couple of nets going, so there obviously are fish in this area. Well, we know there's fish in this area. They've put thousands of fish in this area. But, if uh, what I've heard is true, these fish have been absolutely hammered over the weekend. And they may be a little bit... Uh, they may have their tin hearts on after the weekend bashing. That's happy with the cast, isn't it? Buzzer fishing so easy because we're all I'm almost fishing pretty much static. I've had, I do get fish on buzzers when I pull them in every now and again, but I may have to go into one of my tip lines if that sun comes out and puts the fish a little bit further down. No sign of fish on the surface because it's still a bit cold. The last couple of days have been very cold. 
the uh, temperatures are supposed to be in double digits but with the wind it's felt more like four or five degrees rather than the 10 to 12 degrees that it's been forecast i've been doing, I've been doing lots of road trips as well trying to find bass fishing spots on the norfolk coast and uh i was out the other day and found an absolutely fabulous one spent ages scouting it with the assistance of my 79 year old mum who walked absolutely miles on Monday helping me scout a particular bass spot right now go over to the side this time that's it got a flotilla of swans coming through I have to say it's nice to be out in the fresh air again I've really not been out much over the, the winter months oh there we go exactly as i was saying to the side of the boat now this is not a silver tailed darling this is just a stocky i can just tell that straight away just from the the pool but that was a classic buzzer take buzzer's just coming across in the current and the fish comes and takes it barbless hooks today well that is well down that might even be on the point that's that fish is really far down I'm using about an 18 foot leader so I think this one may have taken the point fly so this is well well down we're only about we're only that's only in the first drift so that's nice it is, it's on the bottom fly So that fish is well down in the water, even though there's a decent amount of cloud that fish is on the heavy buzzer right on the point Fish and catch and release day today so if this one prematurely releases it doesn't matter we've uh, proved the point with a long leader as it's getting the fish up to the surface can be a little bit tricky oh, this one's a bit of going up. I'm probably being tentative because it is my first fish of the season so it'd be nice to uh, to actually land it it is just a, a, just a standard stock eight, but they all count come on now that I've seen it I'm kind of less bothered about losing it Net. The first fish of the 2023 Rutland water trout season. The, the flies come out in the net, which is absolutely perfect. That's a stocky. The tail is in reasonably good condition, but it's not a full tail and there's no silver in it. So that is not one of the, the Rutland residents that is what I'm trying to get today, but it's gone back nicely. Now, I'll show you the fly that I've caught it on. So the top two flies are... Uh, I bought this box of buzzers. Um, Craig Barber's doing some, like a, a set of like buzzer boxes. And I had some buzzers left over from last year. So I bought this buzzer box and put in all the ones that I bought last year as well. But as I said, I didn't have any heavy buzzers. So I went into the lodge and they said, uh, Robbie said, Oh, I just put some buzzers out uh, just just the other day, and they're exactly what you want. It's the heavy, they're the heavy grub buzzers. Um, so I bought them. <laughs> Ian Barr, <laughs> world champion's choice, heavy grub buzzers. So sorry, Craig, my first fish of the season was on one of Ian's flies. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> right. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh. But I'm sure we'll get, I'm sure we'll get them with all the flies. I think the fish will come up in the water as well as being low in the water. But, right, we've got one of the stockies. Let's see if we can get one of the better ones. And that was, a, again, 
the line cast to the side of the boat really just pretty much fish and start it and the fish just absolutely hammered the fly but really deep down that fly would have been a good I'm fishing with nearly a 20 feet leader so that fly must have been oh, a good 12 15 feet down I would suspect because it is a heavy fly and so despite the cloud cover the, the fish are slightly down in the water but that's pretty much typical for what I'm hearing from everybody who's been posting reports on the Facebook group it has been lots of quality fish but primarily stocked fish but we are going to keep on the move because if we keep on the move we have a much greater chance of actually catching one of the uh, the Rutland residents they have put in an awful lot of fish this year So like I say, the objective today is not to catch lots of fish. The objective is to cover lots of different spots and try and maximise our chances of getting one of these resident fish that have been in for a little while. I mean, all the fish in here are stopped. It's just that it's nice to get one that's maybe been in for six months, 12 months. If you can get one of the brownies that's been in for a couple of years, um, phew, it doesn't get any better than that. Oh, there's somebody in, in the boat right ahead, another stocky. I can see it coming out of the water, so it's just a smaller fish. I mean, this whole, this bank along here, it's worth fishing all the way along here. There should be fish all the way down this bank from Hideaway Bay down into Green Bank. And that's what I'm going to do for the first part of the session. Then I'm going to move... I think down to this side of Old Hall and then fish Old Hall. It's funny, I decided yesterday the spots I wanted to fish. I decided Hideaway Bay, Green Bank, this side of Old Hall, Old Hall, Yellowstone, and then maybe across to New Zealand Point. But I've added gibbets to the list because apparently there's fish over near gibbets as well. So we're going to cover quite a lot of ground today, but it's it doesn't involve a huge amount of motoring, which is also nice. We'll get more fishing and less driving today. They've got these new engines on the boats as well. It took me about 15 minutes to get out of the harbour because I couldn't figure out how to work the blooming engine. I'm sticking on the buzzers. I'm not doing any lure fishing today. Right, so I'm straight ahead now. We've done one to the right, so we'll just go straight ahead. I'm using this uh, Airflow Superflow. This is the Universal Taper, it's a great line, only floating line I'm using. I use a presentation taper on the five weight rod and I've just bought a, uh, the more powerful taper for my bass fishing that I'm going to be doing in the Norfolk coast. It'll also come in handy at the end of the season, in, in August I'm off to Canada in pursuit of steelhead and salmon which should be should be really interesting. I've done salmon fishing in Canada for Atlantic salmon on the Miramichi, but I've never gone to the west coast. And that's where I'm going. British Columbia, Terrace. I can't remember what the name of the river is. Oh, there's buzzers in the air, but... I mean, this is the area where the buzzer beds are, so... That's kind of what we'd expect. It's not a fish a chuck with the anchored boats. I've seen a few fish being caught, but it's not a fish a cast. Oh, there's that chaps in there, boat number 17 right ahead of me. Fish are probably close in, moving up and down that bank. There's a nice bay over there I've never fished before. And then now off to the side, left hand cast. always try and throw it into next week if you're covering lots of water you don't necessarily need to be throwing out long lines if you're you're in the boat and covering new spots all the time oh another buzzer 
The water's not thick with buzzers, but... There's another one, boat 38. There must be a shoal of stock fish very, very close in to that bank. And there's 17 in again. Yeah. There's obviously a big shoal of stock fish right tight in against that bank. Probably just moving up and down. But that is not what we are after. Fish just head and tailed right in front of my fly. So maybe they're actually feeding properly as well. I've seen a few fish rise out in this uh, open water. Oh, there's three. There's a fish on that boat, fish caught in that boat, and a fish caught in that boat. So there is a shoal right in close by there. Ah, there's another one. Oh, there's another fish right there. They're actually higher in the water, so that grub buzzer may be taking my flies a little bit too far down. I've seen quite a few fish on the surface now, so it might be that we need to maybe even do wash. Yeah, maybe you do washing line. There's another one there. Oh, there we go. That's exactly what I saw those fish moving, so obviously a short sure of fish. Oh, this one's going a bit more. This one's going a bit better. Has it got the silver tail? Or is it just a stocky that's just got lots of juice? Too close to those boats behind. So we'll just get swimming quickly. Right. It's not what we're after, it's just another stock yet. Yeah, there it goes. That was a classic example of where I literally just came in over a big group of uh, a shoal or a pod of stock fish. It's kind of hard not to catch them when you do that. If, if, you're, if you've got three flies in the vicinity, you know, there's a fair chance they're going to have a look at it. I mean, this is one of the great buzzer spots. I mean, Hideaway Bay is renowned for these massive buzzer hatches. So when these fish have been in for a little while, um, they are going to grow very, very quickly because they're going to gorge themselves in all these buzzers. The takes are great as well because they just almost pull the rod out of your hand. Oh, didn't take properly. Is it going to come back? Must be an awful lot of fish in this area. I had a feeling they would be all the way along here. They'd be, just, they'd be moving up and down. Well, the big groups of fish just moving, constantly on the move in this area. And as you, if you're moving a lot, I think moving definitely increases your chances of getting one of the... the proper fish. Two hooked and landed, and two nips at the fly. It's not bad in the first hour. I do love early season buzzer tactics because you kind of feel that even if it is just stockies you're fishing something that that's representative of what the fish are actually feeding on And, and when you're fishing with a floating line, the takes are great because you physically really, 
it's very rare you're going to connect with the bottom even with a, a heavy fly on the point so you know that it's a fish that's pulling you not the bottom or some weed that you might find if you're fishing with a, a heavy lure on the point Exactly the same on the hang, hardly moving the fly at all. Not even these little ones go. The fishing, the fishing weight, the, the weight of the stock fish is still pretty good. I mean, they're in fabulous condition, these fish. So, you know, well done, Anglia Water, for keeping the, the stock in quality up when. In other places are maybe reducing it because of this cost of Covid crisis, everything's expensive these days. Now is this still on the deep, deep fish buzzer? In the old days, if you caught like eight fish, it was all, there was no catch and release, you had to basically catch your eight fish and then go home. Fabulous fun. And we haven't fished in the same spot twice. We've been on the move all the time. Constantly fishing new water. I thought they may have come up a little bit. Ah, oh, this one's on, this one, they have come up a bit. This one's on the top dropper, so they're moving higher in the water now. This is on one of Craig's flies. In fact, it's my favourite kind of yellow cheeked buzzer with a red hot spot. This was always going to be my first spot today. Oh, this is probably the smallest fish of the lot. <laughs> Look at this fish pool! <laughs> Blimmin' heck! Come on, you're going back, so you may as well just come in. Come on. Oh, that's made a right mess of that. Oh, what a pretty little fish. For a stock fish, that looks lovely. Really fabulous condition. Right, look at that. There we go. That's a beautiful little fish. Absolutely lovely little fish. I need to get fish come up and running. Get this one. Off you go. And it's away. I'm not going to thrash this place. I want to cover a lot of water, so I'm only going to stay here for probably until about half 11, 12 o'clock and then I'm going to move somewhere else. I don't want to just sit here and catch lots of fish in one spot. I want to cover some, some different water. I see my good friend Tony Mould has caught a cracking brownie off the bank, I think. So, well done, Tony. Catcher. Water's incredibly clear as well. Oh! Fish <laughs> taking care of the water. It's not on any <laughs> A lot of fish must have come up and taken the buzzers and jumped straight out. Oh. Just as I was thinking there's nothing in this area, one comes and moors it from below. I think we may even be able to get a really, really good 15 minute video out of just one hour of solid filming. Now that would be fabulous. Oh, that one took on the hand. 
That one too, because the flies were coming up. They've moved maybe higher in the water. I'm going to take that heavy grub fly off the point and just put a standard buzzer on. I think they're higher in the water now. Yeah, they're definitely higher in the water. And we've been on the move. We have never stayed in one place. The fish have all been in different spots. Which is good. This is what I'm hoping to bring you this year. Less fishing, but more quality. Just by kind of picking the right times. Higher in the water, top dropper again, so they've moved up. I'm going to take that grubber off because I think I'm maybe going underneath them. Come on, here they come. Another small one. Flies come out in the net, which is even better. Is it going to go away? There we go. That's away. Nicely away. Right. This is a first. My mission was to come out and actually show you some nice buzzer fish in the hope that we might get one of the, the resident fish. We're in prime buzzer season. We've been fishing for an hour, roughly. We've landed four fish. We've been constantly on the move, picking up fish in all sorts of different spots, um, all on buzzers. We've had them on the point heavy fly really deep down, we've had two like that, and then we've had two on the top dropper really high in the water. So the fish are just moving up and down and up and down, feeding on buzzers. Absolutely fabulous. So, if you've liked this video, please make sure you hit the like button. And I would be delighted if you would subscribe to the channel to see more of my fishy adventures. Thanks for watching.